All right. So once upon a time, there was a woman who lived in a not in a small rural community. She gave birth to 100 children. It was murder on her reproductive system, but she pulled through. Now, because she had 100 children, she thought this is too confusing. I'm just going to name them one through 100. So you know, every mm-hmm. child was just a number. Now, late one night, a terrible fire burns through the entire house, and everyone is de- killed except for one surviving child, uh, a girl named 90. Number child number 90, whose name was also 90. Now, despite this tragic setback, 90 grows up happy and healthy, receives a good education. She gets a job, eventually settles down with a family of her own. But money remains an issue because it, there just wasn't as many economic prospects and it was a small rural community. They're just making their best. So, you know, there's certain things that they couldn't afford. Now, one day she had two children of her own and they came across a stray dog while playing in the park. So they they know that they can't afford to keep the dog. But they enjoyed playing with all afternoon, so they're like, "Okay, here's an idea. We'll come, we'll sneak off to the park every day and take care of the dog, and we'll name the dog this, so that that way we can speak in code. You know, did you take care of this? Have you seen this? So they they went on with their plan. They did that for a few years, but eventually the dog got old and sick and died. So the children held a small funeral for the dog and were the only ones there because they mm-hmm. never told anyone else about their dog. Okay, but only '90s kids will remember this. Hmm. I think we I, we might just need to end this one right here. I don't think I can go on after that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> uh, I, I knew you, it was. A, <laughs> I knew, knew it was, it gonna, was going yeah. to something. I knew it was going to have something to do with the '90s because that's the only way. I did you seriously make that up? Like that entire thing no, up? I didn't make that up. Someone else. Oh wow. Okay, you could just take credit. Not all of these jokes are jokes that I make up. You know. Sometimes well, I, just, I use actual existing jokes. I don't know. Anyways, uh, how's it going? I told you. Pretty good. Should we do our introductions since that's something we've decided we're doing now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who who goes first? Yeah. I'm Mingus. And I'm Futterman. I'm and, the loud one. And I'm the, the not, one. I'm the not we so loud one. We fight crime. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, what, are, what are we talking about today? The only hint I've gotten is a text message asking how many of the Mario games I've played. Yep, that is accurate. Yeah. Um, how many of the Mario games have you played? Well, I think as I said in my text message, I'm familiar with at least all of them. With at Pretty, least all of them. Uh, yeah, that was a bad sentence. I'm familiar with all of them, but I've only actually played a handful and only actually finished one or two. So... Super Mario World is my favorite. That's probably the one I've played the most. Of course it is. And what are we counting might, as Mario I might games? Own like your cop- I might own the copy that you played. I'm pretty sure I got it from your brother at a yard sale. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, it was the uh, the Game Boy Advance version. Um, yep. Yeah, my brother sold it to you at a yard sale. So I now I play, it on, it. I play it on my Switch Virtual Console now because, you know, that's great. The Switch Virtual Console, available on your Nintendo Switch for the low, low price of, like, $300 or something. It's 20 bucks a year. It's really not no, that bad. No, the, the Switch... Oh, the Switch itself? Oh, yeah, that's like three or four hundred. I don't wait, know. Wait, I'm sorry. To use the virtual console, which is already just a store to buy stuff, you have to pay them an additional. No, $20? no, no, it, no. It's you pay twenty dollars a year for a Nintendo Switch Online membership, and that comes with like you get to you access to, like you can play games online. You can, uh, I think, you get like some other special deals. But then the big thing, the reason I bought it is because it gives you access to the uh, NES and SNES virtual consoles, and all the games on those are like all those games are included. Like you get like. Oh. 50 well, plus games need, probably for you know, I don't know if I need all of those. I just want to play the ones I want to play. Yeah, well, that's fine. But no, it's great for me because there's only a handful I want to. And I mean, I use the other features of the online stuff too. So I'm, I'm happy with it. But then the, what's stupid though, I mean, I don't know. You probably didn't even hear about any of it. But there's a big controversy when they released the, uh, was it the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack? Did you hear about okay, that see, one? I only heard about it through the most recent JonTron video. Oh, yeah. He was looking, did you, you saw that, right? Of course I did. Good. But yeah, uh, wasn't that a surprise? Two in like two weeks. Yeah, it's like I, I'm getting my hopes up that he's back to like a regular upload schedule. But you know, I'll probably he's not. yeah, I'm gonna have my hopes shattered <laughs> if I do that. So I will not. Why are get you my hopes hoping? Up. You've I'm been not here hoping. For years. It's like I want to hope, but I've been burned too many times. So Listen, I will not. It's not really a burn thing. I'm I will totally not hope. Fine. It's <laughs> well because it's like John Tron videos are like infinitely rewatchable. So well, they are. Honestly, yeah. it doesn't bother me too much. It's definitely quality over quantity. Yeah. No. But yeah. I'm, hope is also, the mind killer. I'm, I'm, I will not hope. I'm fairly. 
Well, that's a bit pessimistic. And that's coming from me. It's a Dune reference. I thought fear was the mind killer. Oh, it is. Of course, I, I changed it. But yeah, it's a Dune reference. Fear or hope? Uh, I mean, I changed it to hope. The actual quote is, I will not fear. Fear is the mind the killer. Fear is the little the death fear. that leads to total annihilation. Fear is the mind killer, not yeah. hope. Silly. <laughs> What are you thinking, you dumb... Well, I can quote the whole thing from memory, so don't say I'm a fake Dune fan. <laughs> You're a fake Dune fan. You can't quote Anyways, the let's get back on track. With milk and the David Lynn. That wasn't even... That wasn't in the book. That was just a weird, stupid... Well, actually, I probably could quote that. What did it say? Uh, you have no, been quoted... No, don't said, actually. Okay. Well, he you said something along the... Right, okay, I can't quote it directly, but he basically said something along the lines of, you have been uh, poisoned, and you must milk this cat to get your antidote. Or something. Uh, yeah, every day you must milk this cat to get your antidote, and it's. Good old David Lynch. Yep, yeah, that's very much a David Lynch thing. I feel bad for anyone that watched that movie and just avoided the book because of that. Because I mean, the book's weird, but not that kind of weird. No, it's the book is weird, but it's not David Lynch's brain. <laughs> also, yeah. side note, but I'm fairly certain that the only re- there's like no good reason for John Tron to be to be Bilbo. Except for the fact that he can make the puns Shire side chat. And I'm fairly certain he just thought of that pun and then immediately went to build an entire Hobbit set and a Hobbit green screen. Well, then he did the bit with the dislike button being the ring. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that that's just a logical extension of, okay, I'm Bilbo. How do I make a Bilbo joke? Yeah, you're, you're probably Which, right. Which again, I'm pretty sure all of it spawned because he thought fireside chat shire side chat there's a pun i'm bilbo now for this video for no I other can... reason <laughs> um oh yeah chris anyway pratt. Oh, yeah i was uh, chris pratt How being you mario about that? uh you know i'm i'm holding out hope there's uh, you know uh, people have had their have like had doubts before you know like when heath ledger when they heard that heath ledger was playing the joker everyone got mad because they said that he's just a pretty boy and that he doesn't when Poor he's gonna botch that. the character oh yeah they were when they first heard the announcement because if you've seen any of heath ledger's other movies most of them are romantic comedies, and he's kind of just... Was Knight's Tale a romantic comedy? It had romantic comedy elements, but the point is his whole character was kind of that he was like the pretty boy, so the fact that he was playing Joker just kind of floored everybody. But then when they saw the actual performance, like, you know, I mean, I know you have your own thoughts on this, but he's pretty much like everyone's favorite version of the Joker. I know. Yeah, I know, but you've, you hate it because it's not faithful to the I comics. I hate it. No, I don't hate it. That's not... I'll talk about this later. Okay, We're that's here probably to talk for the about Chris Pratt. <laughs> as every character in the new Mario movie that is apparently going to exist. I've been saying for years that a Mar- cuz so video games movies have sucked since the beginning of time and mm-hmm. it's only recently that apparently they're allowed to be good now. Apparently uh, people like the Sonic movie, I still haven't seen it. That's one movie. There's been others like the new Tomb Raider movie was pretty bad. Uh the Resident that's, Evil movies are all pretty bad, I think. Those don't count. Th- that's not what people mean when they're saying video game movies. What do you mean that's not what they mean? What do they mean well, then? Well, because, because the Resident Evil ga- movies were never trying to be uh, video game. Because when you think of a video game, you're thinking of the more colorful, less realistic characters. Resident Evil is like the movies were just a different version of Resident Evil, but they weren't trying to be the video game. But they sucked for different reasons. Then you have, like, the Super Mario Bros. movie, which sucks because it was trying to be the video game, and it was bad at it. Well, no, actually, it wasn't. It all that other have, crap. You, have you actually seen the Super Mario Bros. movie? No, I know what happens in the Mario well, movie. It's, it's it, like they took... It was not trying to be the... the... Oh, go ahead. No, but, like, the Resident Evil games are just telling a Resident Evil story, whereas the Mario game is like, let's just take everything about Mario and not do it. Yeah, no, they they, they, they weren't in any way trying to do the video game. last name Mario. They were trying, yeah, that, was, that was pretty funny, though. Um, Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. <laughs> yeah, the Mario Brothers. Um, Mario. Geez, my train of thought is Mario. gone. I should not have had oh, two you. cups of coffee. I'm, like, Luigi. running on What's your way last too much name? caffeine. Mario. Okay, what's the joke here? It's, the, it's Mario well, Mario no, you and botched Luigi it. Mario. And he says, what's your name? Luigi. He said, let me guess. Luigi Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. No, Luigi Mario. <laughs> I'm not trying. I don't totally remember it from memory. I mean, that's the only part I remember. I've never actually seen the entire movie. This is how long. You know, I saw the movie so long ago. I actually saw it on YouTube. There, there was a time on YouTube before they got so vicious about their copyright protection that you could actually find entire movies on YouTube broken into parts. So I, I like, mean, can if you look hard enough. Yeah, but they always suck. 
Like, but if you want to watch cartoons online, there are places. I know, okay, yeah. <laughs> There's probably places you can watch other movies online too. But my point is, I know me a place and my where brother I watch animated movies. Well, that, that's how I saw the Mario Bros. movie though. Uh, me and my brother years ago, like probably twelve years ago at least, on YouTube we found like a sixteen part like version. It was like the Super Mario Bros. movie, just like put on YouTube in sixteen parts, and we watched yeah. like most of it. And then I don't know why I don't know I didn't finish it, but. That's how I watch new episodes of Craig of the Creek sometimes. They'll get posted in three parts on YouTube. Yeah. But then they get taken down very quickly. Yeah, well, because now they're super vicious about copyright protection. Yeah. Well, which... I mean, to be fair, yeah, that to be actually fair, is a blatant violation yeah, well, of copyright. Yeah, yeah no. The other I'm not saying they're, <laughs> they're not at fault for taking down entire <laughs> movies that are put on YouTube. That's basically piracy, but... There's other places where you know we don't we don't need to even it just no, us complaining about yep. YouTube's content policy is just white noise at this point because yeah. hey, so many people have already done it. Hey, guess what, guys? We also don't like YouTube's policies, like every other person on the planet. <laughs> it's too bad that there's YouTube our opinion. Can't... We don't have to talk about it now. Yeah, that's like Jurassic it's... Park Three is coming out. Did you see that? You mean Jurassic World Three? Oh right, sorry. It's gonna suck though. <laughs> the second one was horrible. Did you see the second one? I don't remember if I ever actually saw the whole thing or if I just saw a collective, like, several hours of reviews on it. Yeah, I think I it mean, was the second one of those two. Probably. I saw it. And I, I actually slept through part. I went and saw it in theaters and actually slept through part of it. Isn't there, like, the dinosaurs are going to kill every? Wait, does this count as a spoilers? Do we care? Well. No, <laughs> I don't. To be fair. I, okay, look, I get, I'm pretty sure our spoiler <laughs> policy is that everything about the sequel trilogy will never tag, but everything else we have to tag. I guess you're right. Okay, so we'll just say spoiler started. Let me just make a note. Twelve minutes, ten seconds. Go. All right, cool. So, isn't the um, doesn't the the second movie end with basically like a bunch of evil genetic super dinosaurs are about to kill everyone, and then they lock them in the house and are about to kill them so that the world is safe, and then the girls like lets them out. She's like, they're clones like me, and then it's like, oh, the world's doomed now. Thanks for that. that yeah, no, that's exactly me. what happens. Um. So the whole movie, now I don't know, one. it keeps kind of, it, it, I don't know, it was kind of, a, I mean, to say that movie was a mess is kind of pointless because it was, I mean, it was a mess, but that's very much an understatement. Like the full first part of it was kind of just like, the whole thing was Isla Nublar or whatever the name of the island was that the uh, thing yeah, was another on. Another dinosaur island. I think but it was this actually. One is the finished one. Well, it was actually, no, it was the first. It, I, I think, know, that's the first movie. Yeah, it was, it was the. Uh, well, no, it was on the same island as the original park. And like these the movies thing. also have Chris Pratt in them. I yeah. actually like Chris Pratt a lot. Well, I like him. Yeah, he's fine. It's just, um, why is he in Jurassic World? Because <laughs> he was just the action hero kind of. He's like the Tom Cruise of our time. Um, but, yeah, the... Uh, what was I going to say? Um, geez, my thought process. This is what happens when you drink too much coffee, kids. I think uh, this so what happens basically, when you don't drink enough coffee. I don't know. But uh, the first part was like they had to go back to the island to save all the dinosaurs because the volcano was going to explode and kill them all. And then they have this big scene where they're trying to be all dramatic and emotional where you see the Brachiosaurus get blown up and stuff. And then uh, and then at the end of the movie, it just takes a dramatic shift to like basically a slasher movie in a mansion where this weird like new oh, yeah, with Indoraptor the, thing. I think they I called think. it the Indoraptor. <laughs> It's basically they, they're they trying just, to do they, alien. They genetically engineered another dino. They, these movies. It's why? Yeah, I don't know. It was dumb. And then yeah, it all ends with the girl where it's like they reveal she was a clone too, and she's like, they're just like me. They're clones, the and that's like, no, something. not really. They're not really like no, you at all. No, the guy's wife. She is the clone of the guy's wife as a little girl, or something I think, like that. I don't remember. His did real he, daughter died in a car crash. I think. Daughter? I think it was like his real oh, wait, daughter was, died in a car a clone crash. Of his daughter. I want to say it was something like that. I think his real daughter died in a car crash, so he made a clone of her because that's how you cope, I guess. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, then they do some weird scene where the, you know, it's like they try to be a horror movie for a few minutes while the raptor goes around stalking them, and then the whole movie ends with the world being overrun by dinosaurs because the stupid and little girl Jeff pushed Holden the button. comes in and is like, ah, uh, Jurassic World. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Jurassic World. Uh, that's when we all got to say, ah, he I, said it, and collectively throw our sodas at the screen. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, all right, spoilers are ending at 15 Jurassic minutes. World. Okay, I'm ending spoilers your, now. Your, your best Jeff Goldblum impression. Uh, wait, hold on, let me write down the spoiler. Okay. 
You were so concerned about whether or not you could that you didn't stop to think whether or not you should. I don't do impressions, if that's not incredibly I obvious. I can't do Jeff Goldblum. I can – I'm trying to think. I can do just like – some care I can do non-specific characters for myself. I'm very sure the only impression I can just straight up do is salad fingers. Well, let's not do that, please. <laughs> that was, I, I'm good without ever hearing that. Um, you you don't want to hear my salad fingers? Impression? I really, really, really don't actually. So we're we're over hey, the 15 what? minute mark. Guess, and this is supposed to be how the next episode. Guess how the next episode is going to start now? Uh, not with salad fingers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're over the 15 minute mark. We're supposed to be talking about Mario, apparently. Mario. Oh yeah, this whole, we got on this whole rant because we were talking about Chris Pratt being Mario. Oh yeah, so my whole point was Chris Pratt is Mario. My whole point was I'm you know a lot of people are outraged by that, but I'm holding out hope. Stupid. You know I I like Chris Pratt. I think he's a good actor, and we've been mm-hmm. surprised before. Like I said, with you know Heath Ledger right. being the yeah. Joker. Yeah, he, that well, was a here's... good performance. And... Here's how I feel. About it. It's like some people are are mad because it's like why didn't you hire hire Charles Martinet? And it's like a couple of reasons actually. One. Charles Martinet is kind of old. He's he can't do his like this would be a larger project. But two, Charles Martinet mostly doesn't really voice Mario for full sentences. He does like sound bites because usually Mario doesn't ever have to speak more than like five words at a time. And he's yeah. even said himself that he can't maintain the voice for very long. So it's like you want somebody who sounds like Mario. You're, Charles Martinet, if you think about it, Mario, doesn't talk very much. It's mostly yeah, no. just like sounds. In yeah, like be, very short sentences. Dude, to be completely honest, I think if that was like if you had to listen to someone talk normally in Mario's voice, it would very quickly get grating because it's you know it's that high pitch noise. It's great for like yeah. quick outbursts, but it's not good Woo-hoo! for if you had to do actual dialogue like that. It would probably <laughs> both murder his voice and sound annoying to us. Which I mean, I guess he's kind of done it before, like you know the Mario teaches typing kind of games, you know. There's been things where he's no, talked he longer, but it wasn't like his full-on he, Mario voice, though. He only says sentences, though. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I, that's kind of what I'm hoping Chris Pratt will do. Yeah. And I mean, that's probably, I don't think he could oh, yeah. do the, the actual voice. Look, I'm hoping he'll just come Here's the, the thing. Zone. Voice actors are actors. You, If they can do the voice, then I don't really care who they are if their voice sounds right. Yeah. And honestly, r- really, that, that'll be... I'm not going to dismiss it out of hand because I've been wanting to see an actual good Mario movie for years. I'm just basically whether or not Chris Pratt can do a good Mario voice is kind of what'll make or break the film, I think. For a lot it's of like people, if he yeah. sounds reasonably like Mario, it'll probably be a good movie. If not, it'll be annoying. Uh, there's going to be a lot more that can make or break the movie than just his voice, though. I do think that yeah, if he has a distractingly bad voice, that will automatically kind of ruin the movie. But like I said, you know what? I'm holding out hope. I'm not going to outright say I think it'll be good. I'm just I'm holding out hope. And honestly, because that's what it's been. It's like. All these bad video game movies, and I guess, and part of the thing is, is it's like you know, video games, you play them, so to, you're just watching it, so it, 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 that's one of the problems you run into. But mm-hmm. a Mario movies, a Mario movie should have been easy because Mario doesn't have much of a plot beyond, oh no, Bowser or some other villain has kidnapped a princess, um, that's either Peach or somebody else. We have to go through a bunch of thematic worlds to save them. It's like, do you know how easy it would be? To make a Mario, you because to see if you have a high budget, you can actually animate some actual like Mario action scenes that like with that it's with that actually are dynamic, and the plot is already the basic structure is already there, so you can fill in all the gaps with tons of character development and character arcs, and it's like it should be easy. Why haven't they done it? Instead, we got Super Mario Brothers, where the Mar- Mushroom Kingdom or something was an alternate reality where human, where dinosaurs, where dinosaurs evolved into humans, yeah. and then King Koopa, who's just Dennis Hopman, comes over to the other world, and he's like, <laughs> monkey, and then he turns into a T-Rex or something. That's Yeah, that's it's the like, whole plot. Is- and the that's Goombas, they're happens. literally like, hey, you know how Goombas are just a head and legs? Well, what if we made him a giant body with no head? Yeah, well, and, and the whole thing was apparently Goombas were like humans that were de-evolved into Goombas, or no, they were like dinosaur. I don't know. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's, it's just <laughs> so weird. what are we, see, are we talking just about the movie today, or what did you want to actually, no. what was your actual topic? Mario. Just Mario well, in general? I'm going to tell you about Mario, man. My first Mario game was New Super Mario Bros. for the DS. A person got it. Huh. Wait, can I say that? They don't know who that is. Nope. For all they know, it's your sister-in-law. Yep. 
or um, my college friend or my lunch lady. Some nebulous person <laughs> bought Should that. We take that out. <laughs> I don't. If you want me to. Do you have the ability to edit that name out later? <laughs> I will do my best. Just like put here. I'm gonna give you a really conspicuous sound to put over it. Well, let's right? do that later. If you do it now, it'll be. <laughs> No, no, that's exact. That's why I'm gonna do it right now. Okay, I'm gonna give you a sound bite. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of work. A person. There you go. <laughs> Just take that, that and put it over the other part. But anyways, I was given. Uh, she had on her DS. Um, she had News from Mario Bros. I got to play it after she was done. That was the first my that was my first experience with Mario, and then Dad was dad just reminded me about 8-bit Mario. He's like, oh, it was better when I was a kid because that's what all parents do. But uh, my favorite Mario games... Okay, what was what was the first? Was it Mario World? Was that my, the one you your first experience with the Mario uh, World? I gotta think. No? Um, yeah, probably. I think... Well, let me think back. So my brother... So we actually had a Super Nintendo when I was super little. It was my dad's. Um, we had like Super Mario World and Yoshi's Island for it. So those were probably the first two I played. I do remember me and my brother playing like the Mario Bros. mini game on Super Mario World. I think I mostly just watched my brother play. A lot of my early video game experiences <laughs> were just me watching my brother play games because I was not good at them. Yep. We've all so, been there. Oh yeah. Totally. I watched my dad play video games. I'm still not very good at Mario. Like I'm not great at the games, but you know, I do good enough. But yeah. Uh, well, so feeling has moved. Yeah, that, that's true. But uh, Super Mario World was probably my first experience. That and Yoshi's Island kind of at the same time. And then we sold our, our SNES and bought a GameCube. And then the next one was Mario Sunshine. Uh, I think that was my brother. I think that's still my brother's favorite Mario game. Uh, Mario yeah. Sunshine? Yeah. I love Mario Sunshine. It's a good game. I remember um, I took a break from it for a while. Because you have... But there's there, Mario Sunshine is really fun, but it does have one flaw that's kind of like because the way the game is structured runs counter to its the way it's structured. It's structured. This sentence will make sense when I explain it. Um, Mario Bro, Super Mario sixty four have a bunch of different worlds and paintings with a bunch of different stars, and the only requirement is that you get a certain number. Is it ninety? How many stars do you need to get to fight Bowser and Mario? I have 64? no idea. <laughs> Probably 90. That sounds right. Because I know there's 120 in the game, but you don't have to get all of them. But it's like, okay, when you're playing Mario 64, you don't have to get all the stars. All that matters is that you get a certain number of stars, and then you can go fight, um, then you can go win the game. And then the other stuff is like extra. So that gives you, because it's a 3D game, so it's a lot more open-ended than the linear games. And um, it gives you more, you can choose. It's like if there's a level you don't like or you just think it's too hard, you don't have to beat that level. You can go play different levels. And you could kind of choose how you beat the game. Mario Sunshine, similar structure. You have to collect the shine sprites, and you have to get a certain number of them to fight Bowser. But also, to uh, to unlock the... It's because you collect the sp sprites, and there's all the different worlds across the, the different levels in the hub world. But the way that you get to Bowser is you have to beat level 7 of every world, which means that you have to basically just play every level. And it kind of, at that point, just defeats the point of being a hub world. Because it's like... You can complete them in different orders if you want, but ultimately you have to play every level up to level seven, and then the last two levels in every world are basically just like a bonus. It's usually like a red yeah. coin challenge or something. Well, but I mean, it's like, yeah. okay, if you're going to structure it like that, what's the point of the hub world in this open-ended thing? Like, well, you the hub world is. I mean, the hub world is basically just another world to explore, and it still lets you play the levels in any order you want. So I wouldn't say the hub world's useless. But yeah, it's not okay, quite as open-ended as Mario 64. It's, it's structured as an open-ended game, but it's not open-ended. It's it's still linear. You have to beat a you have to beat specific levels in a specific order, and it's like I don't know. But honestly, it didn't bother me that much because I had fun. The levels that always annoyed me when I was younger, anyways, were the were the ones where you where you steal he steals your flood, and then you end up in a weird magic world where everything is in space, and you have and it's just a platformer. And at first I thought, those are really hard. I'll just, I can't play these. And then I actually played one a while later and it's like, oh, never mind. It turns out these are actually pretty easy if you just play them. Yeah, they're not that bad. Yeah. I mean, it's basically, that used to be what the entire game was before they had Flood. 
You know, that's what's funny. I got is intimidated you, by the you, uh, plat. I got intimidated by the space, and I'm like, oh gosh, this is gonna be the most difficult thing ever. And then I found out it wasn't. Yeah, well, I mean, some of them are pretty hard. That, that game is actually, you know, kind of reputed for being one of the hardest Mario games, and I don't think they're wrong. It's, it is not. It's. I mean, it's. Okay, we're talking about Mario games. None of them wrong? are super hard. None of them are that hard. So that one being the hardest isn't that far out there. And I've played a good amount of it now. I actually, I'm one of the suckers that bought the 3D All Stars collection for the Switch. Why did you buy that? Because I didn't own any of the games Why? in any other form, and I wanted to play them. <sighs> okay, I had Mario 64. I have that for the N64. I actually have an Mario N64. Mario 64 is really easy to get. Mario Galaxy is really easy to yeah, get. Yeah, but I didn't want to buy another console for Mario it. Sunshine. Yeah, well, I didn't want to buy uh, two more consoles to play those games. So for, you know, 60 bucks, I could have all three of them in one place and play it on my Switch in portable mode even if I want. It was a good collection. Know. I'd love to own a few more. Yeah, you know, it was I'd a good collection. I'd love to own a few more consoles. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, uh, what do I have? I have a GameCube, a Wii. Are those my only Nintendo consoles? I have some... I th- you have a Game Boy DS Advance. And a DS and a Game Boy. I have some handhelds. Yeah, that's kind of... Game Boy Advance. And uh, a Game Boy Advance XD and a Game Boy SD? Uh, Game the Game Advance Boy Advance SD? is the white one that has one screen. What's the one with the split screen? I mean, not a split screen, the flip phone. That's the SD. The Game Boy Advance SD. is the one. Yeah, the SD is the one that folds. The Game Boy Advance is the one that doesn't. Yeah. And then you got the Game yeah. Boy Color, which is just a slight upgrade of the Game Boy. And yeah. Also in there somewhere, there's a Game Boy Micro. Yeah, well, it's got. Oh, we cut what? out. <laughs> is there? Yeah, Game Boy Micro. Yeah, it was, in, it was uh, like a Japan only thing, I think. Yeah. Or something. But Maybe one of not. the hardest things. I'm trying, I'm trying to think. It's like. Because one of the buttons, the my left bumper button on my Game Boy Advance uh, SD is broken. Because <laughs> essentially, I L originally button. had a DS Lite. <laughs> what I say? The left bumper button? <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> it's only the bumper on... Left they call bumper. It, that's, the, that's on an Xbox controller. Left have, bumper. You have a left bumper and a left trigger. I don't know. I don't know. Um, left bumper. <laughs> Do you but want me to list off my consoles now, like, just so we can have the meaningless competition? Uh, I guess. I don't know. Uh, what do I have, actually? Okay, fine. Well, fine. I'll lift off all my consoles. I, have, I haven't gone through all of them. I've got a GameCube, a Wii, and also a Game Boy Advance, a DS Lite, a 3DS, an Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. And there's also a black Xbox 360 that I got at a surplus sale for like 40 bucks, And it's buried in a box somewhere. And let me think. What else do I have? I'm just gonna turn my head. <laughs> I think that's about all. I think I technically also have a PS2 that I found at Goodwill, but it didn't nice. have any power cables. But I figure, you know, I can probably find power cables later. Probably. Because it was only like twelve bucks, so it's like, why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, so yeah, I've got uh an N64, a PlayStation Two, a Nintendo Switch, PlayStation Four. I have a 3DS somewhere. Haven't used it much. Uh, I've also got a PlayStation Portable for some reason. <laughs> um, I thought and that one sucked. PSP? No, PSP was pretty good actually. Was it? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I'm not in the know when it play comes to PlayStation. I've only yeah. used Xboxes. Yeah. Well, I also have an Xbox 360, and I think that's it. So I don't know. I'll let you take this one. Would you like to describe the state of my Xbox 360? It's completely gutted and the cover's removed because it's got various little things that don't work. You have to use like a pin to open the disk drive. That's a toy Uh, lightsaber, actually. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's actually what he uses. Yeah, a toy lightsaber. It's a piece of junk. I have to take the disk drive. I have but to it's... remove it from the casing, push the button so it opens, and then when I close it, I have to tilt it upward so it actually locks into place, and then I can play the game. Yeah, and you also have an Xbox One that is backwards compatible with a lot of the games you play anyways, so I don't know what the point even is. But <laughs> because Well, okay, now it's not a problem, because new games are so huge now. I never ran into the problem that I've run into with the Xbox One, where it's like, oh, you have eight, you have ten games. You can no longer fit any games on this console. It's yeah. like, what in the hell? Why did games get so big? Yeah, I didn't run problem. into this problem on the old Xbox or the Xbox 360. Yeah, that's a problem with, like, my PlayStation as well. Is like uh, I've got, like, ten games installed on it, and I've maxed out the disk space just about. 
Well, I got I got another two I got another portable two terabyte drive, and I just now I plugged that into my Xbox. So now I have right. functionally unlimited space. For now, until games start uh, being multiple terabytes. Functionally unlimited. <laughs> but yeah, uh. that's the thing. I it was it did make me sad. I finally ran um into I I got Alan Wake. I should preface this. I did not. I was. I did not. I got. I did this all before the remake. I just happened to have really good timing in, with these sort of things. But I got. I wanted to. I was reading on. Okay, I'll just tell the whole story. <laughs> I was on TV tropes. I was reading about giant space flea from nowhere. I there's a video at the bottom about control in regards to a boss that's in control, and I thought that looks interesting. What's that game? And then it's like this. I'll play this game, and then it's like, oh, it's connected to Alan Wake. What's Alan Wake? Oh, okay, I guess I'll play that one too. And now when there's I, like three Alan or four Wake, games. Yeah, well, Alan Wake's DLC. After I put that on, my I finally ran out of hard drive space on my Xbox 360, and it was just like, oh. Yeah, that took like 12 it finally years. Finally happened. I didn't know that could happen. <laughs> so yeah, but I, anyways, I played Alan Wake so that I could play Control because Control has DLC that's a sequel to Alan Wake, basically. And now, just right after I do that, they come out, they they release a remaster of Alan Wake One, and then announce that they're making Alan Wake Two. And it's like, ha ha! Once again, I've I've managed to get into something exactly when they're getting around to making a sequel. You know how often that happens to me. Fairly, not very. Oh, very often. <laughs> All right. Well, I we're over the. Watch- uh, I started oh, watching. Hey, uh. I was gonna say we're over the thirty-minute break, thirty-minute mark. Fine. Should we go? I'm gonna keep talking for a bit, and then you can come out, cut. I was. <laughs> All right. Hold on. This. I ha- <laughs> I got. I got into Hey Arnold right when they announced that they were going to release the Jungle movie. I started watching Samurai Jack, and then they right when I was getting to the end of Samurai Jack, they announced that next year they were releasing season. Season five. I get into Alan Wake right when they announce that they're releasing the next game in just a year and a half. Everybody else always has to wait like a decade, and I have to wait one year max because I never get into things until they're getting around to finishing them. <laughs> it's great. Nice. All right, should we cut to commercial? Uh, never. You can never cut to commercial. I'm just going to keep talking, and there's nothing. But hey, look at all the pie! Yes! I will do it! I will live! Anyway, to, um, because, <sighs> okay, re- really, when you think about it, Mario Kart Double Death, wait, did you cut me? No, I did not cut you, I burped. You cut that out, didn't you? What? Oh, that? Yeah, totally. <sighs> yes, very much yes. Why? Why? <laughs> Why do you do this? Thing? I don't know. Um, so yeah, what's uh, Never... what's okay, next on the on. agenda if have, we even you... have one? Well, okay. See, it was Mario, but I, this has kind of just become the video game episode. So you good with that? Yeah, that's opens way more possibilities. Uh, yeah, I was gonna talk about Mario games and Luigi's Mansion. I love Luigi's Mansion. So we're counting so Luigi's Mansion as Mario games? When I say Mario, I'm meaning the Mario universe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually like not, just got not uh, just the Super Mario games. I actually just got Luigi's Mansion three for Christmas. That's great. Well, have you played Luigi's Mansion one and two though? Nope. I can help with that. I don't have a GameCube. I do have a 3DS. Have a 3D... Well, guess what? Oh, you have the you, can... you have the 3DS version of that? Uh, no, but I have a GameCube. Oh, well, that's all right. I don't think the story is that important. <laughs> But it's so fun. I know it's fun, but yeah, I, I haven't got it's very far. Favorite, I played like it's my favorite Mario game. I probably played like twenty minutes of it because I also got Metroid Dread for Christmas, and that was the one I was way more excited about. So I can't play Metroid Dread yet. I the story is not that important. I haven't beaten any other Metroid games. You don't I was need... playing Metroid One, but I got lost and then I ran out of time. And just I play Metroid Zero Mission. If you insist on playing the first game, play Zero Mission. It's just a way better. Like a way better remake of the first game. I'll just play all of them one day. Hopefully I can get the other Metroid Prime. Which are also on GameCube, I think. So is Metroid Prime like... Sorry, is the Metroid Prime games, are they like on the same timeline as the Metroid game? other Metroid games? All the Metroid games are on the timeline, I think. Okay, yeah, because in Metroid Dread, like where it picked up, there obviously was like 
story stuff that happened before it, but it pretty, it summarizes everything that's important, but there was still some stuff where it's like, I feel like that should make more sense than it does. Anyways, Metroid or game, you play Metroid for the gameplay. The story is not the drive. It's just the I backdrop. I play games for the story. I know you do, but Most Metroid is not, not a story game. It's, it's, I don't know. Okay, Metroid Prime 3 is for the Wii. But yeah, all that being said... I um, think I have Metroid Prime 2, because it, I think it just came with the GameCube. Yeah, I gotta get Metroid Prime 1. Once I play all the Metroid games, then I can play Metroid... Dread. I don't know. Uh, Metroid Dread was super know, good, dude, though. That's, that's what I'll say. Yeah. Great game. I just finished I just, it today, I actually. Can't, I can't just go right to Metroid Dread. I don't know. Do you even hear... Hear the story I was playing from earlier. <laughs> Hear what story? That's what we're working with. Oh yeah, you have to play everything. Yeah, that's why you're you're not gonna well, play I a game from 2021. Really Wake, so I had to go find Alan Wake. <laughs> yeah, no, you just <laughs> you're not gonna play Metroid Dread until you play every single Metroid game, including the one from the 80s. At least the important ones. I don't know. They're I don't all know if I need to play Metroid Prime Federation Force. For probably not. Years. I kind of feel like that one's non-canon. Or if it is canon, it doesn't have much of a story anyways. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but well, uh, Okay, some games, like Mario games, I'm not worried about the canon because they don't have very much plot. And same kind of thing with Zelda games. They all have their own individual plots, but they're not. They're a lot more standalone. But yeah, Metroid those... is one character. It's not like a million links. Yeah, no, that's true. But once again, Metro the story in Metroid is not that important, so don't like I don't know, I guess this is more for the listeners. Don't feel like you need to play the other games before you play Dread. It's perfectly fine to play you Dread play individually. All the other games before you play Dread. That's just for you. <laughs> yeah. Metroid no, Dread was very good though. Um the only other one I've played is Oh, oh sorry, I was just the only other one I've actually played is no, Super Metroid. I've got pretty much all the way to the end and then I could not for the life of me beat Ridley because he is super hard in that last encounter. Let me uh, think. Um, but yeah, Metroid Dread. Okay, 10 yeah, out of 10. So, general idea. I remember I played Doom 2016. That was my first Doom game because mm -hmm. I heard it was a reboot. So it's like, okay, good. I don't need to play the other Doom games. Then I played. Wait a minute. It's not a spoiler. Uh, Futterman, put up the spoiler tag. This is not a spoiler. spoiler. I know what you're gonna say. Is it not a spo is it not a spoiler anymore? Well, no. It's it just... definitely was a reveal. What that it's part of the same universe as the other ones fine whatever it's not really Anyways, a spoiler no that, that was even kind and of implied in the first Doom game Eternal, it was no they explicitly referred to it as a reboot when it first came out well they did but they still kind of left hints Doom like eternal that... is when they f yeah but doom eternal explicitly confirms that the doom guy we've been playing as is the same doom guy from the original games it does, and yeah. Then, but I mean, so, anyways, I I went, I beat Eternal, and then they made the DLC that's apparently like the big finish, and it's like, well, before I play that, I have to go back and beat all the other Doom games so that I, before I play the big finish, I beat Doom One. I'm still like halfway through Doom Two because I got stuck because they kept like increasing the enemy count without giving me more ammo. So now I'm in a level where I have no ammo and there's a million demons, and oh, I don't yeah, those, know how I'm gonna get through it. Those old shooters are brutal. Like seriously. Uh, did you play any of the old Star Wars games, like Dark Forces or uh, the Jedi Knight um, games? I don't know. I played part of the first Dark no, Forces game. It's basically just. Front. Oh yeah, well that one, that one's good, but the, old, like, the good Battlefronts. But yeah, Star Wars Dark Forces is basically just like a Doom knockoff, but it's pretty brutal. I never finished it, but then Dark Forces Two, I did finish, but it was also pretty brutal. But that's the one where it's like you get a lightsaber and stuff. Uh, but all this to say. Most infuriating game I've ever played, Star Wars Jedi Outcast. For this, I played the Switch port of that. It made me mad. They did not give you nearly enough ammo. Why they don't that? even. It's just, just. It took me like an hour, like several hours, just to beat the first mission because I kept like getting myself in points where I did not have enough ammo to get through, uh -huh. and there was no way to get more. And then I found out once I finally cleared the level. Turns out they don't restock your supplies between levels, so. After barely scraping through the first level, I get propelled into the second one with still almost no health or ammo. And just left to fight my way through it. And uh, maybe I just am really bad at games, or at least those games, but dang, it, it was not fun for me. I hear that game's really good oh. if you can actually get to like the lightsaber sections. I didn't even get that far. Well... <laughs> That certainly is a tale. It is a tale. <laughs> Let me tell you one. It's a tale of woe. 
I got oh. my own tale of woe for what is hands down the game <laughs> that has made me rage. The Link's absolute Awakening hardest. or Link to the Past, one of the two. Link to the Past. The Ice you know Temple. Where I'm, where yeah, I'm I've going. watched that's... you try to do the Ice Temple. My gosh. See, that's what's great. Oh that's what's great about if you play the virtual console on the Switch, it has the rewind feature. So, uh-huh. I mean, it's technically well, cheating. Let me tell but... you, I'm already <laughs> getting annoyed thinking about it. Yeah, I know. You have to get through the entire ice temple like with your fire hey, rod, and then you hey, need every single hey, shot this of it. Is my what? story. I'm just trying <laughs> to tell the story. fast version so you don't get like. No, there's no fast version. You go through <laughs> all the temples. And you go, you get the three gems or something, and then you get the sword, and then you go to the dark world, and you go through all the dungeons, and all of them are fine. You go through them, they're all sprawled out, they they have built-in little shortcuts, then you get to the stupid ice temple, which, unlike the other dungeons, is arranged to have, like, seven floors, so there's no shortcuts, which means that every time you die, you have to go all the way to the back and basically go through the entire dungeon all over again. And not only that... But the puzzles are super obtuse and precise at the same time. They're, they take forever to get through. And then you get to the final boss, which can only be hurt by two magical objects, one of which uses up most of your magic. So if you d- happen to use your fire rod to kill the whiz robes before you get there, you can't win against the boss. And it takes like seven hits. No other boss takes seven hits. They all take three. And not only that, but when I kept dying and going back to the beginning over and over and over again, I finally get to a room where you have to kill all the enemies. It's got little little jellyfish guys. You have to kill all the enemies to make the door open. One of the jellyfish just floats through the wall, and he's gone, and he never comes back. And now I can't progress at all, and I'm just stuck there forever. And I still haven't beaten the game, and it's been like seven years later. I hate the Ice Temple. I hate it. (laughs) So I'm much. Sh- I'm sure you're it not has the made only me one. rage the hardest out of any game that I've ever played because <laughs> I kept dying to the boss, which flies all around and shoots like it flies around and there's falling icicles and you're on an icy floor. So it's like, how in the hell are you supposed to not die immediately? And you get there, I save fairies, I have full health every time, but it has such an erratic pattern of attack and you use up all your fire. And you have to save your magic to a ridiculous degree. And then after trying so long, multiple times through the whole thing, trying to get back to the boss so I can finally kill it, then the the game just decides, oh, you know what? Screw you. And then it just takes the jellyfish away. Now you can never win. I hate it. (laughs) Sounds rough, man. Sounds rough. (sighs) So, uh... Yeah. Anyways, I've always wanted a copy of Mario Kart Double Dash, but I've never been able to find one because it always goes for ridiculous prices on eBay. My brother actually has one. I don't know where he got it. I think he found it at a used game store for like 80 bucks. <laughs> that figures. Yeah, I don't know. It's a fun game. Uh, I like Mario Kart 8 a lot more, though, just because it's newer and more polished. Double Dash is hard. Like, I don't know. Something about the driving, like, it just feels different. It's not a bad I know, game. But I want it. Well, it's a good game, but it's just, it's hard. And I can't play. I got Super Mario Sunshine and Luigi's Mansion on Game- GameCube back when they weren't super expensive. I just found them on Amazon. I got them for 20 bucks a piece. You keep cutting and out. I think your anger like, rant might have... Like finding a copy of these games. I think your anger rant might have broken the internet. You're starting to cut out. I don't think... <laughs> that's how... And he's gone. Yeah. Or are you doing that on purpose? No. <laughs> no, wait. I'm still here. Okay, I can hear you now. Uh, so yeah, what, what, what's your favorite here. game? What's your favorite what, game of I, all? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, good. Thank goodness. So uh, what's your favorite game of all time? The whole time, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, of all time? Yeah, what would you say is your favorite game of all time? If you had to pick one. Hmm. <laughs> of all time. Mm. <laughs> all time. Yes, all time. All okay, we can say top. Let's just say top five favorite games. Just make it easier. Oh, that's hard too. Okay, which one's easier? They're, Do whichever one's easier. Top one or top five? Not neither of those are easy. I'm so bad at picking favorites. Should, should I go this. first? Go first. All right. Well, my favorite game of all time. Well, my favorite series of all time is probably Kingdom Hearts. So if I had to pick one of those to be my favorite, it'd probably be Kingdom Hearts 2, just because that's the default answer. Um, 
So yeah, that's probably my favorite game of all time. Uh, second favorite game of all time, probably... Oh man, probably Dark Souls, actually. One of the Dark Souls games. Probably Dark Souls 3 out of all of them. I love that series, though. Uh, hey, should we talk about how bad you are at Dark Souls? I'm not bad at Dark Souls. He's very bad. I just never took the time to get good. He couldn't beat the Asylum Demon. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. <laughs> he could I not did. beat the first boss in the game without abusing the fireballs. He had to remake his entire character so he could start as a pyromancer and use his fireballs to beat the Asylum Demon. He didn't even know you could lock on. <laughs> no, I wanted to be a pyromancer because pyromancy is... Not in Dark Souls. It's actually not that... It's it's. It's kind of cool. a nice, like, at least for my Why? gameplay, is uh, Pyromancy is kind of a nice, like, add-on. I like to build, like, a Dex, a Dex Warrior kind of character and then give him a fire, like, because Pyromancy scales off your Dexterity, so it's like, it just makes sense. It doesn't add any extra weight to equip a Pyromancy Flame, so I always give him one, and then I carry, like, some fireballs and stuff in case I want to ignite, like, exploding barrels. But to set up your entire character around Pyromancy is just going to handicap you in the long run, because there are a lot of enemies that are not vulnerable to fire you and everybody who plays dark souls. It's like you, you believe it's like you sincerely believe that there's only one way to play it. And then if oh, you do it any other way, you're doing it wrong. No, it's no, like there's every time somebody has a video of dark souls, they're like, you're fat rolling. Stop fat rolling. It's like, maybe I just like to play this way. Yeah, no, I'm not saying there's one right way. That's what I like about dark souls. There's a lot of ways you can play it. That's just my favorite way is to go with a lightweight build so that I can roll around a lot. And then dexterity weapons, just because that's like katanas and stuff that are just objectively the coolest weapons. <laughs> um, and my favorite way is to gain the ability to throw fireballs and then steal a sword off of a dragon. Yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, there are good ways. To, there, There's no, like, right way to play, but there are ways that are just probably going to hurt you in the long run. Like, trying to rely on nothing but fireballs. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't rely on fireballs. They were just couldn't... very useful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, back to my list. Uh, number three, Bioshock. I love the Bioshock games. The first one's my favorite. My favorite one is Bioshock Two. It, I love Bioshock Two, but I just like one it's a lot more. Not my favorite. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know that Bioshock Two gets kind Bioshock of Bioshock Two is fun, but it it contributes nothing to the story. Yeah, that's why I like one as well because I do love to play games for the story. So. I really like that Bioshock 1 has a really good story. Yeah. Which we're not going to go into spoilers. That's not a really? game I will all ever you spoil. Need, all you need is Bioshock 1, Bioshock Infinite, and then Burial at Sea, and you've got a complete story. Yeah, but Bioshock 2 Burial is still... It has a good story. It just doesn't really add anything to the overarching narrative. But in itself, no, the, the it has plot, a good narrative. The plot of Bioshock can be represented with a circle, which then has a line that just trails off, and that line is Bioshock 2. Yeah, no, that's pretty accurate. But I would still say play Bioshock 2 if you're going to play the series. But, yeah. Yeah, play all of them. Be They're a completionist. Don't, don't leave things undone. If you're going to commit to something, you got to commit to all of it. If you're going to read a book series, you have to read every book. <laughs> you're going to buy a comic book, you need every issue, and you got to read them in order. Don't be one of those lame people who hops on <laughs> on issue 175 and just never goes and reads the old stuff. Or, you know, you could, just, you, have to. you could just enjoy your life and read the things and just consume the media that you personally enjoy and don't make it a chore. That's, that's what I say. <laughs> no. In for a penny, in for a pound. That's how I live my life, basically. Yeah, and you're always stressed out. <laughs> I'm not, that's not why the stress is underlying. Okay. Uh, so number four for my favorite game series. Oh man. Well, those are definitely my top three. Um, number one, kingdom hearts. Number two is kingdom hearts rhythm game. Number three. I have actually kingdom not played hearts melody of memory. If you can believe that I've kingdom played every hearts other game. Five. Number five, kingdom hearts for the Nintendo switch. And that actually is going to be a thing soon. Number six. The one Kingdom Hearts where it's just an interactive movie, but it's still important to the plot. We are absolutely going to be doing an episode all about Kingdom Hearts. No, you're going to be doing an episode about Kingdom Hearts, and I'm going to be here being like, what in the hell? Yep, and it's going to be amazing. Stay tuned for that. Well, guess what? You won't be laughing when I do my thing. Your thing? What's your thing? Oh, you're going to explain all of something else to me? I can pick something that you'll have no knowledge of, and you'll be just as lost. Yeah. But I have to pick something that you're not planning on reading, so I mean, that does limit me a bit. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> I don't read a lot. Pick yeah, pretty much I'm any not... comic book series that you read, and I probably have not read it. 
Well, my first thought was The Sandman, but you're planning on reading The Actually, Sandman. Actually, yeah, I do want to read that one at some point. Yeah, yeah The Sandman is great. <laughs> yeah, that that is one read I do it. want to read, but pick any other. It, yeah, I don't know. I can always, th- There's so many. What, hold on, let me get the Rolodex. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anyways, number four, Star Wars Battlefront 2 for the PlayStation 2. Love that game. No! I mean, no. Oh, wait, PlayStation 2. Yeah. Okay. The original Sorry. Star Wars Battlefront 2. The Sorry, new one's not my Battlefront's for the Xbox. Bad. So when I heard PlayStation, I thought it must have been the new one, and then I. I I've also played the Star Wars Battlefront game. two for the PlayStation Four. Uh, you know, it started off really bad, but once I got rid of all that microtransaction stuff, that was just terrible. It's actually a pretty solid game now. Um, yeah, apparently they like fixed all of the issues or something. Well, it's basically just at this point, it's like a love letter to Star Wars fans, and I absolutely like. I, I love that they did that. Like a lot of characters from like the Clone Wars appear, a lot of scenes from the Clone Wars appear. Like the, there's an entire level that's Kamino, and it has those weird like squid droids just in the background, and there's like a dead one in the middle of the field that you have to like climb over. It's just like they they de- you know they didn't just stick with the stuff that the movie fans will be familiar with. Like it's. It's just, it's great. Like, all the hero characters, they picked actual good characters this time around. I hate, The first game was awful, okay? You know, I liked it at first. I played a good amount of it. It was half of a game. It was half a game, yeah. It was terrible. And the way they did the hero system is you just, like, the heroes and vehicles, the way they were done in the first game is you had to pick up a coin that would randomly spawn on the field. So you'd get people that would learn mm-hmm. where they would spawn and just camp them to play as the yeah. hero characters. Yeah. And it was just, yeah. that was stupid. In the new game, they add it in, like, Battlefront 2, they have now, like, a point system where when you're actually playing the objective and earning points, you get, like, points that you can spend to spawn in as special units. And if you save up enough, you can spawn in as, like, Jedi and stuff or spawn in as a vehicle, and it's great. But, yeah, their selection of heroes is great. They've got, like, Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and they even have, like, a skin that you can get for him where he wears his Clone Wars armor. Uh, you can get, like, I don't know. There's a lot of good characters. But yeah, the first game, the the heroes that it started with were like Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Han Solo, Leia, Boba Fett, and the Emperor, I think, were like the six starting heroes and villains you could play as. The first DLC, do you know who the first hero they added to the game was? Uh, was it Bosk? It was Nine Nub. Which one is Nine Nub? He's the weird, ugly fish face dude that dies in Rise of Skywalker, I think. No spoiler tag for that one. I don't know. He's the one that flies with Lando in Episode Six. Oh, that guy? Yeah, he's, they made him a playable hero in the first really? Battlefront game. The one character I don't think anybody wanted. I don't think anyone... I, I don't even think it was anybody didn't want him. They didn't even realize they didn't want him because they didn't even think that would be a consideration. Yeah, I, I sure felt I, felt... I didn't even buy him and I was insulted. <laughs> um, but yeah, we Battlefront 2. The only fair way would be to pick the one character no one asked for. But yeah, that's what I'll say. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Uh, that, that's what I'll say, though, is uh, Battlefront 2, pretty good. I, I played it for a bit, and then I actually, it was like, it's like 120 gigabytes, though. And I wanted, like, oh, of course I, it is. yeah, it's like, I liked it all right, but it's kind of frustrating. The balance in that game isn't, like, you, you will die a lot when you play that game, which I guess is fine, but... Yeah, I, I decided, you know, I, I liked that game, but there were like five other games I wanted to play, and I needed the space to install them. So, mm-hmm. you know, the needs of the many and all that. The needs of the many. <laughs> okay. uh, and then favorite game number five has got to be... Kingdom Hearts. I already said Kingdom Hearts. That's number the other one. King- There's like 13 more. I'm trying to stick one. to one per series, because <laughs> otherwise it would probably my list would probably be Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 3... Kingdom Hearts, Dream Drop Distance, and then, I don't know, probably not, actually. I, I like other games Oh, more. here we go. I could explain the entirety of Infinite Crisis to you, but I haven't read that yet, so I might have a difficult time. And I don't even know if that would be fun. Well, you're going to explain Kingdom Hearts to me. I'm g- <laughs> I'll pick, I will pick something just as confusing to you. All right. And that could um, be Swamp Thing, but unfortunately, we're reading that one, so I can't spoil that one. Yep. Stay and tuned also, for I wouldn't part dare three. because Swamp Thing is my favorite comic. Yes. Um, Why can't I pick some favorites? I don't know. Uh, so let's see. Number five favorite video game. Thinking hard on this one. Uh, is it Lost in the li- li- the Limbo of the Lost? I don't even know what that is, but I'm gonna say you know what? I'm gonna say Halo Two. It's Not my Halo favorite 3. Halo game. Not Halo Three. No, I like two more. But Halo 3 is the big finish. 
until it wasn't. <laughs> it still is the big finish. All right, what's your list? What are your five favorite video games? Maybe I'll, oh, maybe I'll explain the entire plot of Everyman Hybrid. Can we I figure that out know. off camera? I don't think no. we need it. <laughs> you were talking think the we... whole time. It's fine. I'm, just we... try, I'm looking through everything I got. And you don't need like, to figure it out right now. Be, what would be the most confusing thing possible that I could try to explain to another you person? You know what? I think it'll come to you later when you're not even thinking about it. With no context. So how about right now we finish talking about the actual topic we're doing right now? You know that I have an office comic book? An office comic book? Yeah, you know the Adventures of Jimmy Halpert in that one episode? Nope. Well, I have that. I have a physical nice. version of that. Nice. So, there was uh, also, there was, side note, there was another one that was literally just zombie apocalypse and then Dwight. It's, uh, never mind. That's okay. all you need to know. All right, that sounds zombie good. Apocalypse. Okay, so, hmm, favorite games. If we think about what I actually have... Here, let me help you. I know that Mario, a Mario game will be on that list. So which Mario game is your favorite? Well, I don't know, because it's like I have to pick my top five of all video games. And it's like, oh, well, it's a lot of choices to sift through. Yeah, well, just just say the ones that sound right. Uh, I don't know, because it's like, okay, so... you know, Luigi's Mansion, favorite. that's one of my favorites of the Mario game series. But do I like it more than other games and other series? I only get five. Well, let's just say Luigi's Mansion is on that list because I know it's one of your favorites. I know one of the Halo games are on your list, and it's probably going to be Halo 3 based on what you said earlier. So there's two. Uh, you like Bioshock, right? I'm going to guess Bioshock yeah. 2 is on that and list. I, I love the new Doom games. So well, there you go. Doom is on that list. But, Pick but one more. I played Alan Wake and Control, and those are both great. Okay, then Alan Wake's on that list. There you go. There's your five. You got Luigi's uh, Mansion. No, I don't know if I like Control more than Alan Wake. That's the thing. Okay, spot five and is besides, Alan Wake or Control. <laughs> and uh, Well, because it also, the Mario and Luigi series, Bowser's Inside Story, Dream Team, I love those. I don't know. Those are some of my favorite games. Those are some of my favorite Mario games that aren't Luigi's <laughs> Mansion. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like we're coming up on the hour mark. For, let's see, we're just about at 55-minute mark. I'm trying. Oh, you know what I could do? No, you you know enough context about that one. I was thinking I could explain the plot of Scooby Apocalypse since you never actually finished it. Why are we still on this? I, Dude, I never leave things. Okay, well, we're at the 55-minute mark. Should we start wrapping up? No, nah, we don't need to wrap up yet. Unless... I'm kind of out of things to say on the topic of video games for, for now. I'm sure well, that we'll... Well, let me tell you. I mean, I'm sure I we'll have can... more episodes about video games. Have you... Okay. Have you played Alan Wake yet? No, I have not. Okay, you really... You need I will to do at that. some point. I probably will. I actually have the and remaster then, version for my PlayStation, so... Oh, you heathen. You know, back in my day, we didn't have these fancy schmancy <laughs> I remasters. will cut the, uh, I will cut the recording now. <laughs> no, don't cut the recording. I won't. It's just... I won't, I won't if you don't make me. <laughs> you can't make me. We have a procedure for ending the video. You can't just stop it. Oh, can't I? Oh, gosh. Are you actually going to? No, I'm not. <laughs> Well, that would be no. funny. But like, once you play Alan Wake, you'll realize exactly what I was talking about when we watched In the Mouth of Madness. You will yeah, see. That was a heck of a movie. Huh? That was a heck of a movie. I like that movie. That's one no, of my I favorite didn't. horror you movies know, now. Yeah, I actually liked it too. I think it's one of John Carpenter's less liked movies, but I still liked it. I, I mean, know. I like The Thing a lot more, but it was still pretty good. I know you like The Thing, but it's The Thing favorite. is just Among Us now. That's all that people are going to say. They're like, oh, the thing that's just among Among Us. You know, I don't but, think Among Us is still as big as you think it is. What do you mean, as big as it? <laughs> I don't as know. It is. It, I it, think it's it kind of exists, right? I think it's kind of faded, though. It really a faded. Bit. I mean, people still play TF2 to this day. Yeah, I know, but not nearly as many as it used to. You're always gonna have a dedicated I, following. I'm like still waiting for experience. them to finally release the the seventh comic book issue of the TF2 comics so we can finally get to the end of the story. Yeah, yeah. is Valve it's making been... those? I don't know who's making those. Well, just saying, since it's a Valve property, don't get your hopes up. We still don't know what happens after Half-Life 2. Yeah, but they made six issues. That's already past the number two curse. Still, I'm just saying, they never finish things. 
I don't know. They've they've had several year gaps in between a lot of the issues. The last one came out, I think, four years ago, so it's not too unfeasible. They might finally get around to it. We'll nah, see. I, I, I want to see how that story ends. I'm invested. Have you even played TF2? Nope, but I'm invested in the plot. Huh. To be fair, the plot of the game itself is not actually related to the plot very much. Oh no, there isn't a plot. The game is just an online like arena shooter thing. It was like the predecessor yeah. to Overwatch and such. Yeah, but there is a plot to TF2, and boy, is it a complicated one. <laughs> I really want to see how it ends, because I hate loose ends. It's my least favorite thing. Oh, I, oh, I know. All right, you we're know, but almost to the know? hour. We're almost to the hour mark. Yeah, we're almost to the hour mark, and you know what? I say we keep this party going. <laughs> I've got nothing else to say. Well, here, allow me then to step in for you. Go for it. It was a dark and stormy night. William Shatner walked to his million dollar mansion and asked Leonard Nimoy, do you ever think that Star Trek will be the only thing we'll be remembered for and will forever be portrayed as characters and goofy people instead of the actual humans behind the roles? And Leonard Nimoy was like, dude, why? <laughs> Fast forward five years, <laughs> Doom Eternal comes out. <laughs> what My is door's that? being knocked upon. All right, guess I'll carry this. Here, you carry it for a second, and then we can do the outro, but I have to go see what's at my door. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, just finished Metroid Dread, as I said. That was a very good game. Um, I think fans of Super Metroid will be pleased. Story didn't make a lot of sense, probably because I didn't play the other games before it. But like I said, story's not really that important. Uh, I'd say the game's almost a 10 out of 10, but there are a few sections where it feels a little unbalanced. Namely, the uh, the Emmy zone in uh, Ferenia. It's the, uh, the purple Emmy. Uh, that section's infuriating. And from what I've read online, I'm the only one that thinks that. It's like, the fun part about the Emmy zones is it's like a game of cat and mouse. You have to like outsmart the Emmy and hide from it, and then if you get seen, it turns into this high-speed chase, and if you get caught, you're pretty much dead. Slim chance you might survive, but... Yeah, it's thrilling, it's fun, makes you think. Well, all that goes out the window in the uh, the Frenia zone, because, uh... Basically, everything's underwater, you move super slow, and the Emmy has increased sight range. So if you move even slightly while, un while uncloaked, he will see you, and come barreling after you. Now what you're supposed to do is use your grapple beam to move around underwater quicker, but that only gets you so far. So I basically had to just spam my cloak and move every chance I got. And then even then I had to do want, do an Emmy counter to get away at the end. And that's where uh, if you time it perfectly when he's killing you, you can stun him and get away. So it's like still came down to a bit of luck at the end. That was like the one part that I didn't like. The rest of it was a really good game, so it's like 9.5 out of 10 probably. And that's my review of Metroid Dread. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Book of Boba Fett came out yesterday. I, I still haven't watched it. Probably good though. Heard it was pretty good. It's got all the same people from Mandalorian behind it, so it's probably good. Um, that's all I got to say about that, since I haven't watched it yet. Um, yeah. Uh, you see any good movies lately? Yeah, uh, I'm bad at this stalling thing. So let's see, what else is going on? Um, Luigi's Mansion 3 looks pretty good. I'm only not very far into it yet. Just got the Poultry Gust and uh, just found the Professor. I think next I unlock Guigi. Excited to see what that's like. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's almost New Year's. I mean, by the time you're listening to this, it'll probably be like, you know, five more weeks away. So it'll be like probably February before you hear this, but I, we're recording it. On December 30th, 2021. It's been a doozy of a year. Um, hopefully 2022 is better, but it probably won't be. Yeah.
I wonder when I'm supposed to just cut the podcast. So yeah, I'll just talk other video games I like. Um, you know, I've been playing Prey lately. That's a good one. It's basically just Bioshock in space. So of course I like it. Haven't finished it yet, but I've been enjoying it. It's pretty good. It's a nice open world shooter kind of game. Survival horror elements. That one gets a big recommendation. It's loosely based off of uh, the original Prey game. It was actually, you know, Prey came out years ago for like the original Xbox. I think it was like a 2006 or 2007 game. And, uh, you know, I played a little bit of that game. I thought it was pretty cool, but never played much of it. Um, but yeah, the, then uh, there was supposed to be Prey 2. It was in development hell for years, and then it eventually just got canceled, and then they made the new Prey game instead, which has absolutely nothing to do with the original, but still a pretty good game. Uh, yeah. What else have I been playing? <laughs> been replaying uh, the first Kingdom Hearts game. Too. I kind of took a break from that, but you know, I finished Kingdom Hearts 3 recently, so I decided, you know what, let's just start at the beginning and do it all again, because why not? This time I'm playing on Critical Mode, or Proud Mode, whichever the game has. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the new Spider-Man movie came out, too. I haven't seen it, so I can't spoil it, but it looks pretty good. I think Mingus saw it. He hasn't told me anything about it. Well, um, yeah. Video games. What else do I think? You know, Dark Souls 3, I, as much as I love that game, I've never actually finished it because I always get, I, I, I want to finish the DLC. Um, I could not for the life of me beat the uh, the Painted World DLC, the one where you fight Sister Frida as the final boss. I can get through the first two phases all right, but the third phase always just... Yeah, okay, I can't do it. It's hard. So I don't even know how hard the actual final boss of Dark Souls 3 is. I've never fought him. I know it's like the Soul of Cinder or whatever. But, yeah. First two games were fine. I didn't have any problem with those ones. I mean, they were hard, but I got through them. DLCs and all. Dark Souls 3, nope. You know, I feel like there's a fun discussion to have there about difficulty in video games. I really like it when a game does not have a difficulty option, as weird as that sounds. I don't like it when I'm forced to make that choice at the beginning of the game, which difficulty I want to play on, you know. It's like, it's nice to have the customization, but I always feel the pressure to make the right choice. But I love, that's what I love about Dark Souls, is there is no difficulty option. There's only one difficulty, so you know it's the one that they put all their focus on. It's the, it, the experience is balanced exactly how they want you to experience it. You're getting the full experience just by playing the game. It's great. I like that. And then you know they also put all their work into balancing it. And although you know the games are still hard, they still feel fair for the most part. That's nice. Uh, yeah. I like really hard games for some reason. I don't know why. What was it? Oh yeah, Bioshock. That was the other game I said was my favorite. I could just talk about that one some more. Uh, yeah, when I went into the first Bioshock, I didn't really know a lot about it. I did not expect the story to get as involved as it did. It was really cool. You know, it's like uh, I thought it was just going to be a pretty straightforward thing. You know, you're pl playing Crash Survivor, you swim to a lighthouse, and I thought the whole plot was just going to be you having to figure out how to get out of there. And that's kind of it, but it ends up being a lot more in depth, and a lot of twists and turns happen, and a lot of cool character development. A lot more than I thought I was getting into. Uh, yeah. He needs to learn to turn off his microphone when he's away from the mic. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, then Bioshock 2, as we said, you know, it's a good story, but, you know, it's not really important. But then Bioshock Infinite comes along. It seems like an entirely separate thing, but then once you play the Burial at Sea DLC... You find out it's actually really closely connected to the first game. Pretty cool. Should definitely play it. So, how uncomfortable are you right now? Oh, very. The last I've five minutes. The, I've been here for like eight minutes now. Seriously. I just wanted to see how long you'd keep talking. <laughs> well, I could hear noise coming from your microphone. 
So you haven't beaten Dark Souls 3? No, I have not. You know, you can turn off your microphone if you don't want it to pick up audio, right? Or you can hit the mute button on Discord. I mean, I could have done that. That's right, I don't think we heard anything. I was more just curious how long you'd keep talking. (laughs) (laughs) Lovely. I've been... I've been here for like eight minutes. You're now. the worst. Why? <laughs> I was getting an idea of what just the solo you podcast with just you would be like. Sorry, one second. They do leave. That's the thing. Sorry, my wife came into the room. Uh, oh, okay. We'll <laughs> wrap it up then. Yeah, she she ended up getting off work early. Um, yeah. I really uh, need to get a sign so, that says like "recording in process" to put on my or "recording in progress" to put on my door so that people stop doing that. Anyways, I don't, I don't <laughs> know if that's a good idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, just just play it and we'll we'll wrap it up. Don't you have? To, oh wait! Oh yeah. Uh, also, outro I music. The, I put the other file into the into the Google Drive, so you should be good now. All right, let's do this. This episode turned into an absolute mess, but we got through it. Yep. All right. Uh, it started about. It's th- th- this episode is called Mario, but then we got distracted. Just video games in general. <sighs> video game episode part one. There'll probably be more. Uh, we don't need to do part. The the the, uh, the music is very loud, so I'm not sure how well we can even be heard right now. <laughs> um, well, okay, well I have people in my room still, so I have to be very quiet. All right, well uh, let's just say the thing so, so I can uh, fade the music. Yeah, so you know if I, even I can't even hear you. Just say the thing. <laughs>